Hi, my name is Rishi Rutan, and I'm a trauma surgeon and surgical intensivist at Ryder Trauma Center in Miami, Florida. I'd like to talk today about diagnostic considerations when ruling a patient out for COVID. A recent study in Iceland found that of patients with COVID, 50% were asymptomatic. Anecdotally, we're finding in our U.S. hospitals that approximately 20 to 30% of patients with COVID are asymptomatic. Additionally, for those patients who are symptomatic, 10 to 15% present atypically with symptoms such as malaise or diarrhea. When it comes to diagnostic testing, there are several options. Nasopharyngeal swabs, which are the most commonly used across our country now, miss 30 to 40% of infections. CT chest misses 15% of infections. In terms of sensitivity, CT chest has a sensitivity of 98%, mini BAL has a sensitivity of 93%, and nasopharyngeal swabbing has a sensitivity of 70%. What this means is that in our institution, where testing initially is a protocol of a single nasopharyngeal swab, we have had patients who test positive after the second or third time. Timing of the test also seems to matter, where testing within the same 24-hour period seems to yield less information and less likelihood of a negative to positive test in a COVID patient than waiting more than 24 hours. In our institution, many of the patients initially called COVID negative then underwent an aerosol generating procedure before seroconverting, unnecessarily exposing our surgical staff. Decision making on PPE, aerosol generating procedures, and overall risk assessment also depends on community prevalence. It's frustrating to many of us that the guidelines seem to be constantly moving goalposts. However, I believe that local guidelines should necessarily change as pretest probability, that is the prevalence, also changes. Surgeons and surgical intensivists are usually second or third line of COVID healthcare responders. And so we have an opportunity in the early stages of an infection before the major surge to contribute as subject matter experts because we have more time relative to the first line to keep up on the new research. Because of this and our increased likelihood to be performing aerosol generating procedures, I believe that surgeons should be actively involved in protocol development at all levels. Our knowledge and experience with sterile donning and doffing, surgical infections, and for many of us, critical illness, mass casualty response, and disaster management means we have a unique and critical contribution to offer to institutions that can save lives. It is essential that we consider the potential asymptomatic rate and the prevalence in our community, as well as the false negative rate of our testing that we choose to develop protocols on testing and ruling out a patient for COVID. This means we need to consider both what modality we use and the number of tests we should perform before determining a patient is negative and downgrading precautions. Thank you, be safe, and good luck.